Well, hello, my truth sleuths and horror hounds. Welcome back for something a little bit different. We've discovered a, I guess you could call it ARG, in the cafe and diner. I found out about this one through Inside of Mind, who did a video recently about this series. It started in 2020, and not a lot of people have been talking about it, so I figured I would cover it and go through some of the stories, or all of them, depending upon how much you like this series. Series. I figured I would start doing that by explaining exactly what it is and doing an overview of what it has to offer us. Let's see what it says in its description. The Cafe and Diner Archives 2.0. First opened in 1992 somewhere in Long Beach, California, the Cafe and Diner quickly caught the eye of the local competition after the release of their Hot Bed Blend in 1993. They would then go on to outsell the Open Doors Church in 1997 before or being shut down due to an unexpected fire resulting in the original owner's death. The cafe and diner would reopen four years later in 2001 under new but familiar management with a unique and eccentric staff. They were able to outsell its largest competitor, the Lighthouse SNP. The success came at a cost. It was no longer financially advisable for them to continue on, that is, of course, until 2016, when a large influx of capital from a mysterious pair of investors once again opened the cafe and diner for the third time. Elsewhere on the other side of the country, an old barista franchised their own version of the cafe and diner in Palm Beach, Florida. While the Florida branch served the darkest coffee possible, the main location took root in Long Beach and germinated into a fine successor. After a series of unfortunate and foreseeable circumstances, the remaining staff of the first and second cafe and diners merged with the new franchise and sent into what is known as the fourth and final cafe and diner. While the investors have been paid off, there were still a few debts left to pay, and pay they did, though the price was too much to bear, leaving the world cafe and dinerless once again. But then, your lovely and loving mysterious benefactors, Cat Grass and Twain, resurrected the cafe and diner archives from the ashes for entirely benevolent reasons. So join us as we dig through the many sordid secrets of the once great and late cafe and diner. Friends are expected, patrons are welcome. Now you know how my channel is. Obviously, this is not about coffee. This is not about a cafe and diner. It's a cover-up for something much more. It's about cryptids. How fitting is that that I'm talking about the cryptid iceberg and then I have a cryptid ARG to go through. Beautiful. Here's the section on difficulty. So there's year zero, which is the easiest thing. There's open doors and these are like a bunch of different eras that get more difficult as you go through. All of these receipts are basically the storytelling of how certain cryptids are captured, which is really freaking cool. And all these receipts use the guise of a cafe and diner in order to cover up their actual affairs. Now, there are a bunch of security types, and I think it's it's so interesting to look at this stuff. So these are the security types. The lowest tier of receipt to security used for everyday receipts. D receipts do not have passwords and are unencrypted in the archives. If a receipt index ID does not have a marker in front of it, it is diner. I'm gonna go through each story in each different video that I do on a weekly basis, hopefully, and I'm gonna go through and try to figure out these different passwords without having to go to the wiki that they have in order to get those passwords. I want to do this on my own to as best as I can for you guys because that's the fun of this. For cafes, the common tier of receipt security used for receipts that have uncensored customer information, C receipt passwords are typically fairly easy and then it gets more difficult. The advanced tier of receipt security used for receipts that contain sensitive information, CD receipt passwords are typically more challenging. This is cafe and diner. Diner diner is the highest tier of receipt security used for receipts that contain extremely sensitive information. DD receipt passwords are typically very challenging. That's gonna be fun. T, the espresso affairs, an advanced tier of receipt security used for receipts that were part of the espresso affairs during 2020. T receipt passwords are typically very challenging, but they follow a pattern of all subsequent receipts in the chain, having something to do with the previous receipt. There's the cafe chat. It's a special type of receipt security used for receipts that contain conversation logs from the CAD comm systems. CC receipt passwords will always be the first common name of the employee who provided that chat log. Okay, so that helps. There's the CX complexity. It's a special type of receipt security used for receipts that 
that involve complexicodes complexities. I guess we'll find out what that is exactly later on. CX receipt passwords are, well, Complexico's special brand of complex. DC is Different Cafe, a special type of receipt security used for receipts that originate from far, far outside of the typical cafe. DC receipt passwords range from C to CD in terms of difficulty, meaning cafe and cafe diner. However, DC passwords will often use information from their place of origin. A common tier of receipt security used for receipts that are a bit too secret. Z receipts passwords are typically as difficult as C passwords. Okay, so it's easy. The advanced tier of receipt security used for receipts that are especially secretive. ZZ receipt passwords are typically more challenging and are akin to CD passwords, so this is the more difficult. And here's the hardest one. The highest tier of receipt security used for receipts that contain extremely secret secrets. SZ receipt passwords are typically very challenging akin to DD or worse, so it's either diner diner or farther down. So it gets more difficult as we go. Here's some hint types. Required password hints will typically require information for context found in the linked receipt. Sometimes the password will be directly pulled from the receipt. Other times, more work will need to be done. Interesting. Research types. Research password hints will require some amount of research outside of the archives, though all information needed can be found on the surface web. Okay, so we'll need to do search engine stuff, which is fun. Knowledge password hints will require some innate knowledge or logic. Knowledge needed for these receipts can be found in the archives as it is unlikely to find it on the surface web, or it's not something you need to research like one plus one equals. Okay, and then the last kind of password hint type is is trivia. And trivia password hints are similar to research password hints, except they will always focus in on the author's specific interests that can be found above. So here are all the different people that are involved in these, and this will be really helpful for later, but you can see the different people that came in. I want to go to year zero because this is where everything is going to start. The first year of what would become the cafe and diner follow the true eight his trusted associate and his armor as they start setting up shop in the outskirts of Long Beach, California. Something isn't quite right, but that's all right. Bundle up, stay warm, and always remember to smile. You're on camera. Love that. So we get receipts all the way back to August 1988. Okay, so this is an example of one of the things that we'll be needing to do. Diner receipt, receipt BTC01, date the 9th of August in 1988, I think. And the notes are, and now the fun begins. We can begin brewing the coffee, so to speak. Of course, we aren't actually going to run a real combination coffee and diner. The market is oversaturated, and I worry that it will distract us from our true goal serving customers. Customers, of course, is a code word I have developed alongside Mon Amour. If we are to truly attempt this crazy idea, we'll need to develop quite the lexicon of code words. Still, I doubt we can maintain the charade of a cafe and diner for long. The lighthouse has eyes everywhere. Still, I think it will be worth working to maintain the atmosphere of a cafe and diner. Organizations of our type tend to be a dime a dozen, yet they tend to lack a theme. And themes are fun, aren't they? It adds a nice sense of levity to what tends to be very dark and messy work. Thing is, Mona Moore and I met in a sleepy little diner during a sleepless summer in Long Beach. It only feels right that we should try to milk that nostalgia for all that it's worth. So here are some code words I've worked out so far. Coffee is an obvious one. I feel coffee can stand in general for work with that we intend to do, but it could also mean a sort of misdirection in general. Customers who we plan to serve, I'll go into that a little more later. Tourists that can be those not in our coffee game. Patrons can be those who are not customers, but still interested in our own business. Baltimore, my title, I feel, could also represent a sort of truth that coffee doesn't. Friends, in a not so clever twist, can be our adversaries and competitors, and salt and pepper can stand for our friends at the lighthouse. See? Already this cafe speak has proven to be quite the fun linguistic game. Yours in Baltimore, JC. So what this is basically telling us is that they are tracking cryptids, and their way of getting around people seeing what they're doing is through using code words. You see mention of the lighthouse. The lighthouse is an organization that does this already and oversees this sort of thing and is the, uh, I guess, antagonist to our protagonists in the coffee shop. This is going to be so much fun because what I'm going to be doing is going through each individual storyline of receipts. You'll notice that there's like, you've got CAD, which is CAD, CAD, CAD 01, CAD 02, CAD 03, so on and so forth. This is the very beginning of everything. So what I'll do each video is I'll go through every single one of these and we can see that entire storyline fleshed out per video. If you guys enjoy it, I'll keep doing it.
I think this will be fun and it'll marry with the cryptid iceberg very well. So until next week, when I do this first set of receipts, which I'm going to do the CAD storyline. If you guys are interested in this, you can go ahead and check the link in the description below and look at it for yourself. But until then, see you next time. Sweet nightmares. I wanted to take this time to thank my Patreons and channel members. Your support is so greatly appreciated and I can't thank you enough. If you'd like to become a Patreon, there is a link in the description below. And if you'd like to become a channel member, just go ahead and click that join button and join the Truth Sleuths and Horror Hounds. All channel members and Patreons receive 24-hour access to videos prior to their public release and exclusive updates on my progress. After a certain tier, you can request that I do a certain topic or movie review, or you can even request that I do a game live stream, whichever works for you. At the highest tier, you not only get to choose the topic in which I cover, you get to either co-host the stream or the video that I do that covers said topic, no matter if it's one or multiple. Of course, this is not obligatory. If you want to support the channel, I greatly appreciate it. And once again, thank you so much.